Hi folks, in this video on Pixel, the coding dog, I'm going to take a look at the web page and go over the help section because I found it really informative. Now I called this a web page, but it's not on the internet, is it Paul? No, it's a web page that's uh, served up to your device, your iPad or your computer or your phone by the dog over, yeah. over its Wi-Fi link with your device. It's just a way of interfacing with the dog yes. and, and programming it. So you only get access to this if you buy the dog and then you connect it to, like, yeah. one of your devices. Yeah, that's right. It's got nothing to do with your home router or an internet connection at all. So I'm going to look at the help section, which is broken up into commands, questions and a glossary. And I've actually printed these out. So on the web page, they appear in the order of commands, questions and glossary. But I think it's best to start with the questions because the questions and answers really help you to have a good idea of Pixel and how it works. So the first question is, do I need Wi-Fi to connect to Pixel? And the answer is no. Pixel has its own built-in Wi-Fi that connects directly to your device. You will need a Wi-Fi enabled device, such as a computer, tablet or phone to connect to Pixel. So you can actually sort of switch your router off, can't could, you? If you could to do your main to, yeah. sort of internet connection. Yeah, you don't need a router and an internet connection. Yeah. That's right, yeah. It's also good because like I was saying to you, it doesn't matter where you are, you can connect to it. So I could be outside in the middle of a field yeah, and can, I could connect to it to my you iPad. Could do, do a bit of Python coding in the middle of a field with your yeah. iPad and your Pixel if you wanted to. <laughs> the next question, how do I know if Pixel is connected to my device? In your browser, go to local.codewithpixel.com. The Pixel user interface will load. This may take a minute or two. You will know Pixel is connected when the UI opens. Yeah. What if Pixel won't connect to my device? Disable the auto connect feature on the Wi-Fi networks you frequently use. Now I've heard of people saying this mm -hmm. before that, um, and I found this happen on my own device, that it would some sometimes connect me to the router yeah mm. and well, what I've pick seen me that. off the uh, connection to the pixel yeah that's right because it knows the device you've got knows that the pixel uh, doesn't have an internet connection uh, it knows you're not connected to the internet through pixel so it drops that connection and, and finds the next one it can which is normally your router well uh, you're not bothered about it not having an internet connection you just want a wi-fi connection to pixel from your device Pixel does not use the internet and your device may auto disconnect from mm. Pixel in mm. favour of a network right. that has internet connectivity, which yeah. happened with me. Mm -hmm. Make sure the Pixel's power switch is turned on and the battery is charged. You can also reboot Pixel by switching the power off, waiting 30 seconds and powering it back on. I wouldn't know how to disable the auto connect feature on the Wi-Fi networks I'm using. But if somebody didn't know how to do it, what you could do is just switch your router off. You could do. If you're I having think, a problem with it. Yeah, you could do it's that. It's the simplest way. It's the simplest way, but I think normally if you try to establish a connection more than once, the device you use in your iPhone or your iPad or your computer gets the message. It knows ah, that you right. want to connect to that even though it doesn't have an internet connection. Right, so when sort of chuck you off. And, yeah, but mm -hmm. you're right. A fail safe is just to turn your router off. Yeah. Is Pixel Wi-Fi network secure? Yes, the network is safe and secure. Pixel never connects to the internet and will not store sensitive information. Now, uh, I think folks are bothered about this because mm. it's aimed at kids. That's right. But mm. well, there's no need to worry, as they say. When you first connect to Pixel and open Pixel's user interface, you will be prompted to create a password, Pixel, Pixel will reboot and launch a secure password protected network. 
please see Quick Start Guide for more information. Yeah, so you end up with the, in the situation where only your device can now connect to Pixel once you've gone through Because you've step. got a password yeah. that only you know. Mm. How do I reset Pixel's Wi-Fi network password? Now we never have to do this because no. we, we can remember the password. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you need to do that, slide the power switch to the off position, then back on. Repeat this three times to reset the current Wi-Fi password. Oh, right. Pixel's waste LED will change to yellow if successful to reconnect and create a new password follow the instructions in the guide starting with step two can i use my phone to code with pixel while it is possible we recommend using a tablet or laptop to code because of its larger screen yeah it would I, be, I, I would have thought it would be immensely difficult to do it on a too cramped yeah I mean. what if pixel slows down takes a break or shuts down. This means that Pixel has reached low battery and needs to be recharged. Charge Pixel using the provided USB cable. Where can I play with Pixel? Always play with Pixel on the floor or a large flat smooth surface. While Pixel can sit on a table while you, you code, do not run code with Pixel. Good idea, don't have on, it on the table, yeah. Yeah, on the table for risk of falling off and breaking. Try a hardwood floor, thin carpet, concrete or other flat surfaces. I must say that uh, our carpet is not thin, but we've no. not really had a problem with no, it yet. it's been okay. How do I update Pixel? Go to codewithpixel.com forward slash update on your device and download the update file. You will need internet connection to do this. Connect to Pixel and go to settings, then update. On your device, choose the file you just downloaded and open it. Pixel will update and restart. Now that's something we haven't done. We haven't checked for updates, have we? Yes, that's right, we haven't, yeah. I'm still having trouble. Can someone help? Yes, we'd love to help. Contact us at info at educationalinsights.com or call us on one eight double zero nine nine five four four three six. Very helpful. So what I'm going to look at next is the glossary, which I found really useful because it did clear up some things that I wasn't sure of. Mm. So it's in alphabetical order mm -hmm. as you would expect. Yeah. I start with algorithm, a list of steps that solves a specific problem. Applications, and the explanation is applications, which that's a bit odd. Binary, a way of representing information in computers using ones and zeros. Mm. Bit, short for binary digit. Now, this was news to me. I'd heard the word bit, but I never actually knew what it meant. Right. A bit is the smallest unit of binary information in a computer, meaning it has a value of zero or one. Mm. And there are four bits to a byte. No, sorry, eight bits to a byte. Block-based programming language. Blocks represent lines of code. Users move the blocks to a code space where they can be tested and modified easily using blocks instead of keyed text. Reduces errors and allows users to build a stable program much faster. Blockly. Blockly is a drag-and-drop block-based coding language. It is one of two coding languages you can use to code Pixel. I already had a bit of experience with Blockly because yeah. we got an MBOT a while ago. And yeah, it uses that's right. You use that uh, graphical um, programming language using the blocks, yeah. But what I found was that um, as I did more complicated programs, mm -hmm. It got really cumbersome. That's right, yeah. And I wanted to switch mm -hmm. over to Arduino, but I just found Arduino too difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but I've only had Pixel a day, but I did find that the little bit of Python I was introduced to, yeah. it was really well explained and I found it so much easier. Oh, good. Bug. This is something that I had a misconception about. Uh-huh. Any error in code can cause the program to not perform as expected or stop 
or to stop working. A computer error is called a bug. Finding and fixing computer bugs is called debugging. debugging now, yes. I didn't realise that a bug meant a mistake in programming, that somebody made a mistake mm. when they did programming. Mm. And I was thinking it was like something that happened that was unforeseen when you run the code like what some sort of corruption or some sort like. of corruption like from outside <laughs> right like electrical noise <laughs> yeah that. yeah i didn't mm. realize that all it meant was a mistake a mistake that somebody's made when they're writing the code yeah so that cleared that up for me mm. as well file a unit of storage that contains information pictures or data that can be accessed by a software program a file is nameable so its contents can be easily identified GUI, a graphical user interface, is a collection of pictures, toolbars, and icons that make it easier for users to access all, all aspects of their computer system and files. You were saying like um, GUIs on everything. Oh, now. yeah, yeah. I mean, go back a few years ago, 10 years ago, or something like that, and there was more um, uh, command line. Um, operate uh, use of an operating system icon a small picture that represents a program or file in the computer's user interface if then statement when a command will only activate if another command happens first for example if pixel detects a hand wave in front of it two times using the proximity command then it will turn around Input output to give information to a computer, you use a keyboard or mouse or some other communication device to input the information. When you need information from the computer, it will output to the monitor or a speaker or some other output device. I thought that was a strange explanation. I thought they would talk about inputs as sensors and yeah. outputs yeah, as they, things mm, like um, lights, motors, light. speaker. Yeah. Mm. They seem to have used it in, in, in relation to a computer system rather than... Uh, the dog. The dog, yeah. <laughs> Which is a bit odd. IR, infrared. Infrared radiation is a wave with electricity which Pixel uses for measuring distance. You thought that was a bit odd as well. So a wave with electricity, yeah. yeah. It's an electromagnetic wave. Basically, it's just a form of light. We form can't, of light. We can't see. So it's a form of light. We can't see that Pixel uses to bounce off things yeah. so that it can detect yeah. mm -hmm. how far away some... But actually, it doesn't detect how far away something is. It just it just detects there's something there. It doesn't yeah. measure, does That's it? That's right. No, it doesn't case. measure. It's just when it's so close, like an inch yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. The infrared can also be used to send data, can't it? Yeah, like remote controls. And uh, I think you're, you're, this coding, uh, this thing, what's it called? Oh, the code activator. The code activator. This uses an infrared link, doesn't it, to um, yeah to, pixel, to send the to send the code to it to yeah. the pixel. Mm. Mm. LED, a light emitting diode. LED can be added to a circuit and controlled by a computer. Pixels body lights are LEDs. Mm. Capacitive touch, cap touch, capacitive touch or capacitive. Sensing is a technology that uses human touch to complete a circuit or give an output which is used in Pixel's touch command. Code, software that directs the computer to perform a task is made up of lines of code. Code is written in a programming language that can express the directions in a way the computer understands and can react to. Code activator. The code activator is a device used to activate code sequences on Pixel when you're away from your device. The user can pick which buttons activate which code sequences. So I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this video. But in the next video, I'll read out the rest of the glossary and I'll also look at this commands list which shows you both the Blockly and the Python language and gives gives a definition of what it is. But well, that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, as always, and hope to see you next time.